Come on, let's do this. Do you ever have one of those perfect days when everything seems easy? Paris Marathon 2023 was one of those. Victoria filmed a lot more than me because I was concentrating on trying to break three hours. Right, welcome to film my run for the 11th time that we're doing the Paris Marathon. Although Mark is here from Richmond, Virginia, first time in Paris, first time doing the Paris Marathon. We're both going to attempt under three hours. Let's see how it goes. Wish us luck. How are you feeling, Marcus? Okay, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Welcome to film my run. I'm Victoria Cousins, and this is the Paris Marathon 2023. We've got Sarah, we've got Jason. It's really cold. I lined up in the three hour pen with Marcus. Both of us a little on edge, but confident and determined to do our best. Our nerves weren't helped by the confused start when we almost went off before we were supposed to and were worried then that we'd activated our chip timers. Moments later and we could hear sirens behind us and two emergency medical bikes appeared and drove through the start. But finally, we were ready to go. With the three-hour pacer bouncing on his toes ahead of us, the announcer began his countdown. Okay, interesting start, but we are off and running in the Paris Marathon 2023. Let's do this. I settled in behind the three-hour pacer and made my way down the Champs-Élysées. Some 90 minutes later and Victoria's start was somewhat less chaotic, but rather more crowded. Over 50,000 people lined up to run the 2023 Paris Marathon, making it one of the biggest marathons in the world. Only Mumbai Marathon has come close in the past 12 months. We've done 1K, 41 to go. The Luxor Obelisk stands at the end of the Champs-Élysées in Place de la Concorde. Once round that, you're on the Rue de Rivoli, passing the Opera House, before heading into the grounds of the Louvre Museum and past that famous pyramid entrance. 4K done. Kudos to this runner. He is wearing nothing on his feet. There's no shoes. No shoes. Yeah, no shoes. Good understand, but don't understand. Yeah. Back on the Rue de Rivoli, it's a straight road all the way to Bastille. I had settled in and passed the 5k mark feeling comfortable. I was ahead of the three hour pacer now and trying to run to feel. 5k in uh, just about 21 minutes, just under. Hopefully haven't gone off too quick. Feeling okay. This is 5k. This is our first timing mat. Victoria and Sarah were enjoying the sights and sounds, including City Hall, the impressive Hotel de Ville building. In front, we have Team Marathon de Beaujolais pulling a wine barrel. I'm not sure if the barrel is full of wine. Sarah and I seem to be part of Team Beaujolais now. We're caught up in this. Bastille is a great place to watch the marathon because you can see runners at both 7k and 26 kilometers. With 7k in and the support really is superb. There are drummers and bands all along the route. Approaching Bois de Vincennes, the crowds do thin out a little, but that gives you time to compose yourself and refocus on the miles you have ahead. 42 minutes across the 10k mark. Still feeling good. Just trying to settle in, relax. Going through the 10K mark, everything was going well. I felt comfortable at the pace I was running and I didn't feel like I needed anything to eat or drink at this early stage. So we're now over the second timing mat. That's 10K in an hour and two minutes. We're a bit ahead, 
of our planned pets. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Wait, ask me again at mile 20. <laughs> the cool weather is helping. It was definitely perfect weather for marathon running, if a little cold for spectating. The bands really do help you run through the park. It can feel a little lonely here, knowing you still have such a long way to go. But there's more vocal support as you reach the chateau. Paris Park oh, Runners! Yeah. We're passing Chateau de Vincennes. Once past Chateau Vincennes, you start heading out of the park and back towards the city. I was still on track. 15k done. Still feeling okay. Go through the park. With 6k to go to halfway. I've decided not to look at my watch for the time being, just to let the miles flow. I still didn't need anything from the aid stations, which meant I could avoid the congestion, trip hazards and potentially race-ending crashes. Bravo! It's 18 kilometres done and now we're heading back into the city. Leaving the park, Sarah was going through a low period in her race. How are you feeling, Sarah? Yeah, a bit better. Sarah found that park mentally tougher than she was expecting. 21 kilometres. We're almost halfway. That's two hours, 12 minutes. Whilst there was a 21 kilometre arch, oddly there wasn't one at halfway, which did throw me a little. Just past halfway in 128. So, we're not doing too badly. Can't afford to lose much time in the second half. So we are still on for sub three. From here, the route heads back up to Bastille, which you can just see in the distance from the aid station here. Bananas, raisins, sugar cubes, cake. What more could you ask for on a marathon? The gingerbread cake is amazing. That's what I'm looking forward to at the finish line. <laughs> Victoria is about to give us a good example of what runners are supposed to do with their water bottles once they've finished. Paris Marathon, you have to throw your bottle. A bit. Rounding Bastille again, I was on a mission. At halfway, I'd realised I'd been running a little slowly and was behind my goal time. So I'd sped up and was pushing to get back on track. One hour, 45 minutes at 25k. I don't know about you, but I am constantly doing the maths in my head. Got one and a quarter hours to do 17k. This is where things can start to go wrong in any marathon, but particularly in Paris, where you have to run through a number of tunnels, all of which have a short but significant climb out of them. The first one is the longest and it can get uncomfortably warm. I remember feeling very relieved to get out of it. There's a DJ playing in one of the tunnels, but this far into the marathon, those short climbs can sap your legs if you're not physically ready for them. But more importantly, it can sap your spirit if you're not mentally prepared. And here we are again at Place de la Cocco. Sarah's saying it felt like a year ago we were over there. More like three hours. It's a bit long, three hours. sure many people want that hose on them today. As you make your way through the tunnels, if you look ahead you can see the Eiffel Tower come into view. I knew I was getting close and as yet I hadn't slowed down. In fact I was feeling stronger and more determined. 30 kilometres, two hours five minutes, 12k to go so we've got 55 minutes to do 12k. Just over. So let's do this, eh? Let's do this. So I had eaten half a banana. Victoria and Sarah were eating cake. Ginger cake on a marathon rocks. We're at the Eiffel Tower. This is a good feeling. Go on, Cooper, give your mum a power up, please. She's been so looking forward to seeing you. I've got warm clothes for you, but you don't feel like you need it. Thank you so much. Enjoy. 
How good did that feel, Sarah? I've been looking forward to that for about an hour and a half. Feels good. We got 11 k left. Yeah, let's get this done. Although the tunnels may seem relentless, the crowd support grows and grows once you pass the Eiffel Tower and the finish line starts to feel within reach. I knew I just had to maintain pace and I'd make it under three hours. To go. Victoria heard so many people shouting her name along the route. 35 kilometres, seven to go. Into Bois de Boulogne now for a few kilometres. 35k. 37 kilometres done. Five to go. Just a park run. Bois de Boulogne is the second big park on the Paris Marathon route. But it's changed this year, so you don't spend quite so long in the park before running back out onto the city streets where the crowd support is much better. We're now on the new route, so I'm not entirely sure where we're going next. I was definitely tired with three kilometres to go, but the adrenaline and the crowd support kept me going. I was absolutely fired up for the finish line because I knew I was about to take a huge chunk off my PB. 41 kilometres, one to go. With Boston and London marathons this month, Victoria's focus for Paris was simply to finish without getting injured. For me, this was my goal race. I'd trained hard for three months to break my PB and speeding up down the final hill through the crowds certainly felt like a victory lap and the culmination of a long winter of work. Sarah, how relieved and happy are you? I am so much cake. 350 metres to go. We're both going to eat cake. Rounding the final bend, I sprinted as hard as I could to make it under 2.56. And here's the finish line! When you're this close to the end, the sense of pride, relief, achievement and exhaustion combine to create a unique feeling, an emotional high that's difficult to find in any other situation and one that has to be experienced to be understood. Done! 2.55.44 Okay, so that could not really have gone much better. Uh, maybe it could have gone one minute better. I was aiming for my secret goal was 2.55. Came in at 2.55.44, so not, not quite on A goal, but definitely under the B goal of smashing my PB, under the C goal of sub three hours, and London qualifier for next year absolutely delighted it was the course was um better than it has been uh, we don't go through the park at the end quite as much um it it was just as up and downy as it usually is there was a little bit of a wind occasionally that blew you back but not not too much to speak of really all in all it was fabulous um i'm just i'm really pleased really pleased with how it went you know, I, I don't think I could have asked for much more. So that is it. I'm just now going to get changed. There's my medal, by the way. I'm going to get changed and go and find Marcus and everyone else and Victoria, who will be another hour and a half, I think, before they finish. Have you filmed some things? Oh, she's filming us. <laughs> 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 I don't actually know how to get on the finish line. <laughs> And that was it. Well we YouTube. had done it. A new PB for me and one down and two to go for Victoria. If you'd like to watch Victoria get her Boston qualifying time, click that thumbnail on the screen now. If you're not subscribed, consider doing that to help us get to 13,000 subscribers. And we'll see you on the start line next time.